Good morning, Sean. How are you doing? I'm great, because I finally have something to do again. Oh, man, you got lots to do. Uh, not only yeah. in the trading arena, but uh, you got lots to talk about. So I, I uh, scheduled some extra time just in case we run over today. I guess the best place to start is what's fresh on everyone's mind, that being Twitter, as you took advantage of some of this weakness, and people can still take advantage of some of the weakness as it's trading right around the 34 and a half level. But what's your take on the earnings, and give us an update on your thoughts as to adding to this position. Yeah, I mean, here, <clears throat> I think I think there's like three or four things that are like kind of almost best set. And I'm, you know, I'm not one of these people who's who's made any street cred or any like minuscule fame on making fun of CNBC or making fun of the Fed or you know whatever. But I mean, they're literally guys that have twenty thousand plus thirty thousand Twitter followers because all they do is criticize the Fed, right? Yet they never really do anything. Professional right. trolls. Yeah, I mean, uh, yeah. So so, and I'm not one of those. But but I will like. There are times I think it's good to point it out. Like I literally have not heard one intelligent comment about Twitter today on CNBC, starting from like four four thirty five a.m. my time. It's 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 and, and you know it's kind of always been that way. It's the they they loved it. They loved it when it was new and hot and and near all time highs. Uh, you know they hated they hated it after the first really good drop or two. Then they loved it again when it was you know forty nine to fifty three ish. Um, it, it, basically, the, the, there's certain there's certain stocks that that kind of the majority almost always get wrong, and I would say that that Twitter kind of falls into that camp. I mean, eventually, if the stock does kind of what I think it, it's going to do eventually, which is probably going to be a company that's two or three or four times bigger than, than it is today, both in both in total revenues and market cap, then eventually it'll it'll kind of find its place, kind of deserved place where it should be. Um, but yeah, I mean, it's just, uh, my view is, I, I mean, here's the most salient comment, and I, and I literally challenge anybody in the world to debate me on, on, on real, well, for one, I'd, I'd challenge anybody in the world who's been better on Twitter than me since, since, since the, the first day about the IPO. But, but more importantly, just the facts. And, you know, it wasn't just two, two or three quarters ago, Analysts literally had like zero to negative four percent growth forecasted for this quarter for Twitter, and they had Twitter, or, you know, basically having flat to negative growth in revenues for the year. Well, what did Twitter just post? They just posted twenty. You probably have the exact number. They they grew year over year between twenty three and twenty four percent. So so just kind of let that sink in for a second. So so three quarters ago, the average analyst I think had. Zero to negative growth assumed for this quarter. Twitter just did 23, 24 percent. By the way, I had roughly 15, 20 percent growth baked in when when nobody had any growth baked in for for Twitter. So, and I'm not saying this to toot my own horn. There were a few other guys who kind of had this Twitter talk correct as well, but it's basically the minority really have gotten the stock right, and the majority have gotten it vastly wrong. And and again, just the the analyst community. Assuming effectively zero to negative growth for Twitter, and Twitter's doing twenty three percent growth. Okay, who's right? Twitter's right. The minority, with the book minority bull camp, is right. So it kind of makes sense that the you know, Twitter is going to get rated from time to time because any time a stock still has that many people on the wrong side of the boat, it's sort of easy to pick on in the short term. And Twitter is prone to raids. I mean, you know, part of it. Any, I mean, you can't say this is a. A, really a mid cap stock anymore but in in today's lexicon and how big market caps have become it really is almost a mid cap mid cap stock you know years ago it wouldn't have been uh you know you wouldn't well, you wouldn't call a 20 or 30 billion dollar market cap company mid cap but in today's world it kind of is right so so it doesn't have as much institutional sponsorship it's easier to raid uh, I'm a little surprised it's down close to 20%, but but even not really. I mean, if by the way, you will, really interesting chart, and, and your technical guy uh, pulled it up or, or said something akin to this. It's basically just testing the bottom of the trend line. So uh -huh. so you know, there's a trading range. You could draw the low trend line, the high trend line. It's basically testing the bottom of the trend line. And that's it's a nicely upward upward sloping trend line, by the way. And you know, stocks just do that once in a while. You know, they go below the cloud. Well, at least normal stocks do. You know, they go below the cloud, they go to the bottom of the trend line, they go to the bottom of the trading range, and then they and then they kind of bounce and do whatever they're going to do. But, um, you know, fundamentally speaking, I mean, if I were to say, I mean, if I were to see something that would say 
lend me to lower my price target. I mean, I would have said that already. And, and I, I kind of think my price target's right or it's in a good spot. And, and if, it, if I were to say, would do, is there anything to increase my price target or decrease it? it I, I see more evidence of, of increasing it because what I see now is I actually have more confidence in the durability of revenue growth now because effectively, think, think of it this way, effectively Twitter has lowered their own bar. Um, they've cleaned up a ton of stuff. The MAU numbers, ba basically now they have the comps are going to be very, very easy on MAU numbers for really for the next three, four, five, six quarters. So it, it basically what they've done is they've kind of just reset the bar lower. Uh, and that might be a good thing because if, if they had had a good quarter and, you know, let, let's say a quarter that were to get the stock back up to 46, oh, let's say 46, 47, 48, um, I don't know if it would have lasted that long, and then the comps would have gotten very tough for Twitter. So, so I think that for the next foreseeable future, uh, you know, put it this way: I'd rather eat 15, 20 percent short term, and then make 35, 40, or even 100 percent or more uh, on longer term. And I, you know, I don't, I don't think longer terms like five years. I think it's you know four, four to six quarters. So, I, I think, I think the the path is pretty good. Now, I, I like it here. I said I, I was going to buy some in the in the uh, 35, 36 range. I'm pretty much going to add to this every buck lower now, too. And, you know, I had sold, rev I mean, I had effectively sold my whole position in Twitter. And, and if you don't, if that doesn't, if that's not clear, it's because my Twitter position pretty much tripled. So, so I, you know, I basically sold a third of it or so. Um, so effectively, I sold all the money I once had in Twitter. And, and my plan is, as long as it stays really under 36, 37, I'm pretty much going to replace all those shares. And, and I'd rather replace them. At 35, 34, and 32, then 35, 38, and 40. But you know, if I got to buy it at 38 or 39, I will. Um, I'm still collecting quite a bit of uh, quite a bit of juice for, versus where I sold uh, the bulk of this. So uh, I, I don't expect uh, it to have any kind of a sharp rebound, unless unless the analysts sort of sneakily defend it next week or something. Um, but again, I just don't see any numbers that are bad, that bad. I mean, the MAU number, I mean, DAUs were still double-digit growth again. Um, and I think I said this on one of our, I don't know if it was last call, but maybe a couple calls ago. I mean, what happens when Twitter's done cleaning up? Do, do the MAUs finally sort of start matching DAUs? So do we finally start having MAU growth that is, just makes more mathematical sense? And I think we could. Um, and by the way, I've always kind of said it's stupid that the stock trades on MAUs, but guess what? It does. The, the Twitter's always traded off sort of MAU beats and misses, rightly or wrongly. It just sort of has. Um, and I would say now, doing everything they're doing, the the, the MAU comps should 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 get better, not worse. So uh, I could say a lot more, but I mean, really, I, I think that, you know my price target's fifty fifty five. I could make it a lot higher. I think long term. I think it's an eighty to a hundred billion dollar company. I think I think they have a very very easy path to doubling their revenues again. Um, and they, they, you know, there's a lot of catalysts for Twitter. So uh, I mean, this is this is really one of my kind of my favorite mid to larger cap. Uh, again, m my view, mid cap growth company. So you know, I don't see too many things I really like. And now the, this is exactly why too. I, you know, as you can tell, I wasn't really excited to really buy it much higher. So, you know, I, I might have nibbled here and there. I might have shorted a couple puts here and there. But, but for the most part, I didn't really done much. I mean, this actually gives me the opportunity to get more aggressive on the name again. So that's good. All right. Let's talk about another one that came out last night, actually, and that being Amazon. Here we've got this. We had a run-up in the pre-market and a bit of a pullback. And I know you have not necessarily been all that favorable of Amazon and the performance always talking about that you know there's you don't necessarily dislike Amazon but there's lots of stocks in the universe that you'd much rather own have what what would it take that you would maybe potentially look at this as a short because I know you're not looking at this this little pullback off off the the day's highs to get long but what would it take for you to to maybe dabble in a short position well I mean if if I was running hundreds of millions of dollars I'd probably be short some already is it you know as a uh, it, it, sometimes stocks are hard to operate in um, it, you know if you don't have unlimited resources right so I mean, I you know, just just personally in, in 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 the accounts I manage, 
it's much easier for me to take meaty positions in names like Twitter and Finisar and Cloudera and Hortonworks and things like that, right? Um, and, and I've, I've, you know, I've bought plenty of stocks. Again, Google was my largest position at one time. I think it was a five hundred to a six hundred dollar stock then. Amazon or uh, Apple was my largest position at one time, you know, or several times actually. And it was a at the at, at the highest price it was. It was a I don't know what it was the seven hundred uh, four hundred and fifty to seven hundred dollar stock. Um, so so price doesn't really scare me off, but but it's I don't know. It's like I I mean I looked I I should have I should have done some puts on it this morning because because I really believe that that open would fade and it faded pretty hard. Um, but yeah, I looked at them and I'm just like, ah, yeah, I just didn't want to outlay the capital on, on a relatively low probability bet. And by the way, my view is as high probability as I thought those puts were, I just view any option trade as a low pro- lower probability trade, right? Mm. Because you're, you're dealing with something that expires at a defined date and 92 to 94% of all options expire worthless if you pay premium for them. So so in the lexicon of, of, of option math, as, as I like to point out, you know, I view all option trades as relatively low probability. I did view that, I, again, I should have basically done some puts, but I mean, I was super busy. I was looking at, I was looking on Perva, looking at Twitter. I was looking at my fiber names because they're kind of cheap again. So, yeah, I, I basically kind of was getting swamped with so much stuff coming at me. I had to kind of pick my spots. Um, and decide to focus on a couple other things, but but yeah, I mean, I like to say if I if I had um, you know massive amounts of trading capital running pooled money pooled money, I'd probably be short. So now I think I've said this though. I I would say Amazon's like my second least favorite short of the four fangs. I did, you know, I would say I would say Netflix by far as far and away my favorite. Facebook is too. And by the way, though, I mean, hey, those were basically uh, those went down a lot more. Um, Amazon's probably three and Google's four. And I, I don't even think I'd be short Google um, out of those Apple. four names. Well, Apple Apple was sort of inserted into Fang. I, I really view Fang as the four names. Apple, I mean, they kind of out. I mean, there's, there's one I like to use, which kind of includes Apple and Microsoft and a few other things too, right? It's like the longer version of, of Fangum or something like that. Oh, yeah. Um, but yeah, no, I, I, I yeah, to me, they're, they're, you know, Apple and Amazon are, or not Apple, Apple and Google are very similar. I, I, I've, I've shorted Apple a few times. I, I think it's a decent short right now. I just don't know how much juice uh, it really has. And now the timing of it's not as good. But no, I, I think Amazon is a decent short. It, all it's going to take is a market downturn, right? And then the beauty, the beautiful thing about it, if you're short Amazon at the right time, it will go down more than the market will, um, but it, you have to be nimble. You have to be quick, and you have to time. In other words, whenever you think the market's done going down and it's going to bounce, you better cover your Amazon short because Amazon will probably most likely bounce with the market. The, there is a, one thing that could cause an Amazon short to really pay off would be if there's any if there's any kind of you know monopolistic um, uh, case brought against them. I mean that that but see you could almost wait till that. I mean, if, if that were to happen, you could almost wait. Yes, would the stock be down a lot on that? It would. But, you know, that's something that could make Amazon drop a lot. And most people would defend it and say, oh, this isn't going to be a big deal and blah, blah, blah. When in fact is it would that would probably be the thing that would make Amazon like almost, a, you know, a one to a two year short. Because it would probably underperform the market for a fairly extended period of time. Um, but yeah, it, you know, Amazon's kind of almost a do nothing. If it gets if it gets even more completely absurd, um, I do think it's a very expensive stock, and I, and I do. But it's it's not as expensive as, as Netflix and Facebook and you know this whole cloud sector that are basically short. Um, you know, it, I mean, it is basically a monopoly, and, and you know, monopolies are a little tougher to short. <laughs> so you know, it, it, it's. Um, uh, you know, it's one I'm more just sort of watch. It's 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 probably a factor in my sentiment stuff because I watch. I don't know if I've assigned a- anything mathematically to Amazon as as part as a component of my sentiment score, but it's almost like a kind of an extra thing I always look at. So when I'm looking at my sentiment work, I always kind of look and see where where Amazon is on the chart, how much it's moved, how far it's above certain moving averages, and things like that. And you know, it's getting pretty extended again. I mean. Um, I, you know, I, I don't, to be honest, I, here's the best thing I think I can say about Amazon. I, I don't really see the quarter as one where I, I'm actually kind of surprised the stock isn't, hasn't been raided a little bit. 
I mean, because when I saw, yeah, the earnings beat was huge, but they could almost report anything they want on earnings. They can have anywhere from a big earnings miss, which everybody says, oh, big deal, and right. they pump the stock up anyway, right? Mm -hmm. Or they can have a great big earnings beat. It's, so it's, it's, the earnings is somewhat kind of immaterial for the name. I mean, honestly, I, I kind of thought the revenue number was a little light. And I, you know, the what was the big thing that's that's essentially made Amazon a double is, is their cloud cloud stuff, right? Um, the name's escaping me at the moment, but, you know, Amazon Cloud, basically. And that growth that growth decelerated quite a bit. So, I don't know. I, 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 to be honest, I'm kind of surprised it's up. I, 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 I wouldn't be surprised at all, uh, or I wouldn't have been surprised if I woke up and Amazon was down, you know, 30 to 50 points. And, you know, so, I don't know. And it's going to do what it's going to do. I mean, I, I, I literally almost think the computers just kind of control the movement of the stock and so whenever whenever the computers decide that the whole market needs to come down they'll just make amazon go down and apple will go down and then you know they'll be able to get they'll be able to uh insert their their x x percent market correction at, in due course which by the way i think is pretty close to coming again but yeah i you know i like to say amazon is amazon it's it's kind of a tough beast to to uh to to, to bring down at, um, at the same time, I, I, I don't really think there's any reason to, I mean, I wouldn't want to be buying shares of it here. I, I just think that there's so much more money to be made. Um, you know, we, we could mark this a time. I wouldn't be a bit surprised if we're reaching a point where the next six months, year, maybe up to two-year period of time, Amazon underperforms the market. That, that wouldn't be a big, big surprise. And I wouldn't have said that a year or two ago. Um, but, but I think we're at the point now where uh, it's so extended – there's so much good news baked in that I would be pretty surprised if Amazon, you know, uh, outperforms the market over the next one to two years. Okay. So since we got a couple of the bigger names, high-profile names that you cover out of the way, let's talk about the market in general. And you just maybe highlighted it a little bit that you think that we might be in overextended territory. Here we are today with the... Uh, the Nasdaq's only down, what, about four-tenths of one percent. S&P's only down two-tenths, but small caps are down uh, well over one percent now. So have we reached a new point where you're sniffing out a short in the yeah. Nasdaq in general? In, in fact, my next note or my last note today could be that, I, you know, and I've, I've done these correctly, I, I think, three times this year where I basically said, Hey, we're due for 400 to 700 plus point drop in the Nasdaq. I'm pretty. I'm. I'm basically going to post that today. Uh, if I don't post it today, it'll be. It'll be early Monday. I, I just think we're getting really close. And you. You actually kind of predicted my 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 indicator that I. I actually think we're kind of seeing a stealth correction under the surface, which has been occurring for most this week because. You know, most earnings reports haven't got much love. The beats, e even the good beats, haven't really resulted in in stocks rising that much. Um, which, by the way, I did I did think maybe if Twitter had a good quarter, they could go up just because so few stocks have gone up on on, on good prints. But um, but yeah, we're it seems like we're in a phase now where they're gonna they're gonna they're gonna look to beat up stocks. Um, and and it's probably going to take an exceedingly good report for a stock to hold or go up in value. Which, which again is it's pretty interesting that Amazon is up because it was not an exceedingly good report. Um, so we'll just we'll just have to look. But I, I you know you, the, the Dow's not doing much. The Russell has like I say the Russell's down one point four percent today. Um, you know the S and the finance group has been holding. I mean par, I think part of why. The S and P's been been trading better and almost back to new highs. Is we finally seen that some finance stocks kick in. That Goldman Sachs I talked about it is probably up twenty points from from one point once we talked about it. But yeah, I, I this is this is kind of that point. Like I said, there's a lot of stocks have already corrected underneath the surface, you know, to the tune of like two to four percent or more. Um, I mean, Twitter. Hey, Twitter's correcting fifteen plus percent today. So it's. I think the setup is there, uh, and it, it wouldn't take much. Maybe if Apple doesn't have a great report, because that's one of the last legs of these of these big market cap stocks. In fact, I'll go so far to say, had, had Google's report not been bought and, and pretty aggressively bought, I think I think this week the market uh, performance would have been much worse. I think so. So it, almost to a, to a to a name, 
I think the Google report almost saved what what or delayed the market correction that I think is going to come. But yeah, I think I think we just need kind of one of those 400, 600, 800 point Nasdaq declines, and 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 then I think we'll you know I think we'll have a lot better money making opportunities after that occurs. But I think the odds of that are a lot higher now than they've been for a while. Okay, and I just want to remind the listeners out there that his calls have been pretty good, but they don't necessarily always happen come Monday morning. You know, shorten it right now. No, you, know, you may but have I'm to basically wait a week three or for so. three. Yeah. yeah, no, I'm basically three for three. I think I called for three near 10% corrections this year, and we pretty much have had them. Uh, and a couple were really close, like within two two or three days of kind of when I posted. I think one took one took maybe a week or two right. to kind of get kicking. Um, but yeah, no, I mean, I, and I'm not saying, you know, and by the way, you don't, you don't get a 700 point NASDAQ drop in a day. I mean, you, you could, but you know, it t- typically takes, you know, a couple weeks two, three week period of time where you just get more down days than updates over a 10 or 15 day period of time. Mm-hmm. Whereas, you know, recently, what have we had? I mean, we've, uh, at one point I lost count of how many S and P updates we had or Dow updates we have in a row. Or out of like the last twelve or fifteen, it's been a bunch of them. Um, you know, that's kind of a factor too. I mean, you get you you get too many. You just get too many updates in a two three. I mean, you if you look at this month, almost every day has been up on the S and P. Again, there's been. I mean, I'm I, I'm just eyeballing. I think I see four down days this month. That's not very many. Yeah, right. <laughs> so you know, when you get that set up, the, the odds get pretty good that you're gonna gonna have a, a you know a reversal of that type action. Yeah, what I and oh, let me let me add one thing. Sure. Uh, you're also seeing a lot of stocks dropping that really have no reason to drop. I mean, like cheap biotechs. So so what happens is you can almost kind of feel and smell the liquidity be, just kind of be being reduced. So you know, when do biotechs, especially cheap or mo- lower market cap biotechs, drop the most? It's usually not not when they've had bad news. It's just when there's market liquidity dries up. And so the, the only directional trade on them is basically the algorithmic rating or selling. And there's not very many buyers, and these things just cave. And that's, you know, and I, and I do like that space. I think some of the best buys in the market are kind of in cheap and spec biotechs right now. But, like, they're just dropping almost every day in a row. It's just, like, drop, 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 drop. Not huge. But today, you know, I'm looking at a lot of names that are down 2 3 4% again, which are they're already really beaten up. You know, Acacia hasn't had any bad news, really, that I can recall. That name has probably dropped 10%. So there's there's lots of these, what I call these stealth, you know, 5 to 10% moves that have already occurred. And that's usually a pretty good sign, too. Maybe the Chinese, uh, uh, the, the tariff stuff that was going on earlier this week, because that hit the fiber names pretty hard. So I it guess- could have, yeah, it could, but I don't know. I just think I just think these things well, are trading because the there's that's the excuse they'll give, right? Because, it is. You but I just highlighted the- several times that that you don't you're not really baking that into your your um, thesis on why you like that space. Oh no! Well, in fact, if anything, we've got better news on ZTE. So so I mean mm-hmm. if. Acacia is not really a China name at all. In fact, they really only have one Chinese customer, which is ZTE. So, you know, to, if, if you want to look at real impact and real news to the fact that ZTE is not dead and is going to buy stuff, well, that, that's that's Acacia's only Chinese customer, right? So, uh, yeah, it's it's it, they always put a narrative to explain what's happening, but but most of the time, what's happening is this: either liquidity is increasing or it's decreasing, and. And you know that can be a host and a host of complex reasons, but uh, I think I think we're kind of in a, a period where liquidity is going to get sucked out of the market, and algos are going to have a much easier time bringing stocks lower. Now, the setup for that, by the way, for longs can be very beautiful because you get stuff that's cheap, you get better buys on it, and that's the stuff that rebounds the most. The other thing, we we probably will hit a point where the companies that do report really good quarters will get rewarded. Uh, my, my guess is it might take about a week or so, but if, if we get enough selling, then when we, 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 we do truly get a good quarter, you know, we could get outsized moves to the upside, uh, to the upside on, on some of those names. So uh, we'll just have to see what happens. All right. I would be remiss if I did not bring up Facebook in your thoughts on what happened on earnings. Well, yeah. I mean, I, it, I, it's kind of what we laid out. I, I think we said it, you know, it was going to be hard for them to have a quarter, which really could get rewarded higher. 
I mean, but they, you know, they actually outright missed. I mean, I didn't think, I, I thought they were going to beat again. I, I didn't think the magnitude of the beat was going to be that good, but I thought they were going to beat on both EPS. And, I mean, they, I think they only beat EPS by like 4% or 4 cents, which, I mean, that's like, that's that's as close to a miss as Facebook basically gets, and they missed on revs. Um, I don't know. I'm kind of surprised the stock is, is, is not, I think the recipe for the stock to be down more is there. Um, I'd rather short it into strength. I mean, I wouldn't be a bit surprised to see this thing back kind of in that 186 to 190 area. Um, maybe even that, maybe that's too fine of a, too fine of a range, but, but something like that. Um, and I think this is a very good name to short on strength. And again, if, if you look at Twitter, okay, 24, 24% revenue growth, roughly monetization is actually improving. I mean, the, the, the funny thing is that there's nothing really to dislike about the metrics. By the way, some people say, well, they guided, they guided EBITDA low. They always, they always talk down EBITDA. I mean, well, put it this way, four out of every five quarters, they're pretty, they, they sandbag EBITDA guidance pretty harsh. I mean, they're, I mean, I've lost count the number of times that Twitter's beat the, beat the EBITDA number by literally $80, $90 million. So, um, so, but yeah, no, the numbers are good. I actually think Twitter is taking share from Facebook. And I, I think it kind of showed up this quarter, actually. Uh, it, the people aren't reacting to it. But again, $710 million in revenues. I mean, that's, that's a big number. Um, they're probably not getting any incremental revenues from anybody else. I mean, maybe a little bit from Snap. But, but I think to the degree that Twitter's gaining share from anybody, it's, it's Facebook. Um, and, you know, a little bit of lost revenue at Facebook makes a big difference to Twitter. That's another reason I really like Twitter long term. Um, but, yeah, no, I, I just, again, I, I don't really see any reason why you would buy Facebook. I mean, there are Facebook bulls out there. And this is coming from a guy, you know, I was like, I jokingly say I was one of two people on the planet that liked Facebook when I was 22. So, um, you know, and, and I even put a blurb in there. I was interviewed by CNN Money, and the guy just, just was, you know, just going, going to town on me. I said, look, look, you know, let's talk in six, nine, 12 months. But I said, you know, mobile revenues are basically nothing. And I think, you know, in four quarters, mobile is going to be 45 to 50 percent of Facebook's revenues. Now, you know, this is back in 2013. That's pretty much exactly what happened. I may have been off by like 5 percent. But, you know, that became the big growth story for Facebook. And, you know, it went from trading at five times net cash to, I don't know, whatever it's trade, whatever multiple you want to say. But, um, you know, so the, the, I have liked the stock in the past. I, I just haven't liked it for, you know, quite a few points. Um, you know, I just, it's got to be, it, something's got to happen for me to to basically view that it, view it more favorably than lots of other names. And, you know, once stocks get this extended, you know, I mean, another great example of a stock I really used to like, I don't really, I just don't like it as much anymore as Splunk. I think Splunk's an incredibly dominant company, a really important company, what they do. But, you know, I don't know. Uh, you know, go, it basically tripled up the 2016 lows. Uh, there's just not as much juice to the upside. So if it were to come down enough, I, I would like that name again. Um, but, yeah, I, I just think there's better longs than Facebook. Um, and, I, and I think it's a pretty good short, especially if any $10 bounce from here. All right. So we'll throw that one on the radar. Where would you like to go as far as some of the other earnings that we've had? We've had a whole lot of them, but what have what, what ones have surprised you that caught your attention? Either not only for a trading aspect, but, but but maybe something that summarizes the whole group. Something that's really caught your attention. Yeah, no, in fact, that's a, you're almost leading to exactly what I was going to say. So there's been lots of reports that are just sort of so-so that haven't really been rewarded. Uh, something like a log me in got, got hit really hard. Um, again, kind of one of these cloud type names. Um, you know, I, I haven't seen, uh, I, I, you know, I don't, I don't see much love. Uh, Citrix popped, but it's, it's the hope the pop is fading pretty good. Um, you know, so service now is, is super extended. Basically what this is all leading me to talk about is I still maintain that I really like this IGV as a short, you know, so because if you look at the top 10 names in IGV, you know, Adobe's in there, Intuit's in there, um, Citrix might even be, if not in the top 10, it's probably in the top 20. But again, out of that whole top 20, there's only one name that I don't think is an outright short, and that's that's Oracle, because Oracle's kind of pl a plotter, slow growth name. 
which is which is cheap. But EA EA got rocked a little bit, so that that's one of the top ten names in it. So if you if you just start kind of looking at all this stuff, um, we we we're finally kind of getting to that thing I talked about where even even if you like these companies, there's just there's just a point where it's really hard for them to make headway versus the the current price and the valuation. And I think that's where they are. And I, again, I, I really think people are too cavalier about the risk. I mean, even right now, IGV is only down a couple percent. And, uh, you know, this is something, if the, if the whole NASDAQ were to correct, you know, to 10, let's say 5 to 10%, I think IGV would drop 2x that. And it might even be a little more than 2x, but I think 2x is a pretty a pretty safe assumption. So, you know, you get let, let's just say we pencil in a, a 10% market correction, you get a 20% drop in the IGV, that's, that's almost 40 points. I can make quite a bit of money on that short if it goes down 40 points. And it's not really hurting me. I mean, yeah, you know, I think at one at the worst I was down maybe 13, 14 points. That's that's minuscule in percentage terms. And it wasn't I don't even think it was 7%. So so that's kind of how I line a lot of this stuff up. And again, I've talked about Splunk. I would argue Splunk is probably one of the best large cap names in that group. And Splunk was like the first stock to drop 20 points off of highs. So, so if, if the market environment is such that Splunk can't keep making highs, I just think the other stuff that is making highs is, is whistling past the graveyard. So, so I, think, I think that's a really important thing. You know, something like a new relic, I mean, what, what did that trade earlier this week? I mean, that's dropped a lot in the last couple of days. Um, so, you know, I, like I say, I, I really kind of like this thesis of either, either just outright making money or at least having a very good hedge on IGB. It's, it's, it's really my favorite short. I mean... As much as I dislike Netflix, and I did make money in, on Netflix short, and I'm going to stay short Netflix, and it could be a spectacular home run type short, just like Tesla could too. I, I just think IG, I can size IGV up more, and I just kind of have more faith in the thesis, um, or maybe the timeliness of the thesis, um, because a lot of things would have to go right to make that thing keep going up, and it, the, it's not going to take much. Uh, wrong to happen to make it drop. Um, so, like I say, that's I, I think that that that's kind of how I almost summarize the whole week because because I, I look at a lot of you know whether it's EA whether it's Log Me In whether it's Facebook um, that not too many not too many stocks are are are, are maintaining upside. Service now I think pop for a day is kind of giving it back. Same thing I think Citrix pop for a day is giving about half of it back. And then you know a lot of these names I mean Log Me In's down like twenty five percent. Um, EA is probably down 10 to 20 percent. Again, Twitter shouldn't be down, but they're down 15 to 20 percent. So you start lining all this up. I think at, at a minimum, it's probably not a bad idea to have some hedges in place. All right. Are there anything on the long side that has moved outside of Twitter? What's another Twitter type trade that you've seen during this uh, during this? Well, I, I'm looking at Imperva uh, because Imperva is just a weird stock. It, it's uh, I, I think Imperva just tends to get hit as much as it does because it's just it just literally has no sponsorship. I frankly I should have bought it pre market. I, I think it was 43 to 44 pre market. I was I was super close to buying some uh, and I I just didn't buy it because I because I you know again sometimes you get a little greedy and you're like oh man four to th you know. 40 to 41 would feel super good on this thing. Um, so, so I, you know, again, I, I should have bought some at 44. I didn't. It's at 47. I mean, I could have, I could have caught a little popper on it intraday. I'm looking at that one. That's a tough trader, though. I mean, that's, I would say this. Only people that like stuff, that don't care if stuff doesn't move with the market should apply for a name like that. Because if, if you know, if you're going to get bent out of shape, if, if, you know, if the market does something really good and Imperva sits there for the next six weeks, then you probably shouldn't own the name. But I, I still think they're going to get bought out. And when they get bought out, I think you got 20 to 30 points of upside in, in the thing. Um, and and while, on, while I say, oh, I'll echo the Kramer comments of never buy a company be, in the hopes of a buyout, there are times I've made a lot of money on companies because I, I felt so strongly that they were going to get bought out. And, and this is one of them. And I mean, I could rattle off a list of names and pretty much all of them that, that I thought were going to get bought out, and most of them have. Um, but, but I also could make a case that Imperva has a, a, very, a very good business on its own. It's just, I think the biggest problem with them is earning consistency. They, you know, any given quarter can be a bit, I mean, I've seen them beat earnings by 26 cents and get very little out of it. 
Um, in, in fact, I've seen, I, I think the last three quarters in a row, I think they had three huge earnings beats in a row. And then the stock kind of did this big lift intra this quarter. It, it went from like low 40s to high 50s just really in the last few weeks. Um, so I don't know. I mean, that, that's one I could buy. I, I wouldn't have much fear of, of, of like any kind of permanent losses with the name. Um, so I don't know. I'm looking at that one. Uh, you know, a lot of the names, I, <coughs> excuse me, <coughs> a lot of the names I like really haven't dropped that much. I mean, I still like the fiber optics thesis. I think that's all there. Um, I don't know. You know, maybe we could circle the wagon on something like light. Because, because again, I, I think Apple is going to have a very interesting report in a lot of ways. But, I, but I'm not so sure it's going to be that bullish for Apple. But the one thing I feel like will, will be bullish is going to be 3D sensing. And, and so, you know, if I were to kind of look at technology now, by the way, and say, what are the areas that have the highest likelihood of outsized growth, you know, really market beating growth in certain verticals? A 3D sensing area is probably one of my favorite groups because I actually think next year is, is a tough year for comps and tech. So it's, it's going to be hard to find, like, uh, outsized areas for growth. Um, I think Twitter still could do it. Um, but, you know, I think the FANG names are going to have a hard time. The cloud names are going to have a hard time. We saw Twitter's data center stuff. I think I think data center growth is gonna is probably going to slow from a from a, almost a hyper fast kind of pace. Um, so two areas I would say would be like this three D sensing Internet of Things area. I think is going to be a huge huge growth area. Um, and then and then something. Um, oh, like, I, I still think security is very much under invested in. And I've kind of been half right and half wrong on security. I mean, CyberArk's been really good. Uh, I nailed the Palo Alto call, but at the same time, FireEye uh, hasn't really done anything. So, um, but like I say, those are the probably the two areas. It'd be like 3D sensing, Internet of Things, and security. I, I think are going to be two areas of good growth in a tech world where growth is 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 harder to come by. Um, if I look out three, four, five quarters, um, there was one other name I was going to talk about. Um, you know, I also don't think it's a bad time for solar. You know, if, if, if nothing else, nobody's talking about it. Um, and, you know, we've had a lot of solar news recently, which, again, I, I took more as good versus bad. The market took it as bad and kind of sold a bunch of these names off and sold them off pretty big. Again, you've got some China stuff. you got tariff stuff. you you got a lot of noise in the space. And as you know, you know as well as anybody, a lot of noise translates usually to market weakness versus strength in whatever group that is. But... A uh, f- funny thing is, I think most of the noise is actually good and, and will be good for the business. So uh, even a first solar, which I typically don't like, you know, that's caved in huge. I mean, that's like 30, 40 points off of highs. My favorite name in the group is Sun Power. You know, that was almost at nine. Now it's back to like seven again. Um, that thing's been stuck in a really tight trading range, by the way. But but hey, it's it's kind of at the bottom bottom side of that trading range again. Um, I don't know. There's lots of things we could talk about, but th- those are like, you know, in a world where things are getting tougher, sometimes you can make more money by kind of focusing in on fewer names, the areas that are that are probably most likely to show upside, and and I think those are those are the three areas. All right. Let's see. I wanted to go back to F. Uh, a fire eye, F E Y E, because one of our listeners asked about it and wanted your current thoughts on that name, and you just mentioned it. But uh, let's take a deeper dive into fire eye. Yeah, I mean, I'm I'm staying long. I'm not. Uh, and again, this is you know the the Twitter tra- the Twitter decline today is exactly is exactly kind of the reason I've been kind of hoarding cash because you know if if one of my favorite things favorite themes names areas gets beaten up you know i, I want to be able to have plenty to deploy um a fire eye is one i i i don't mind holding it i don't really want to add to it and and that's uh that's usually not a great sign for the stock by the way cuz cuz a lot of times when when my instinctually i just don't want to add to something it usually i don't know usually it's pretty it's a pretty good thought um, in that, in other words, if I see a good price that, that I normally would add to and I'm not adding to it, um, you know, in other words, maybe, maybe we'll get another quarter or two on fire ice. I still eventually think the stock works. I think, I think it's very, very undervalued, but I, I almost get a fear, a growing fear that they might have to succumb to kind of a cheapy buyout, meaning, 
meaning they'll get bought out for a price that they that they should never shouldn't have agreed to, but they do, right? Because it just there's too it goes too long without showing anything. Eventually, the shareholder base gets pretty disgusted, and then what happens is a, a big shareholder comes in, agitates, and they just want to make a, a relatively quick twenty five to fifty percent on it. Um, now that said, hey, if it were to go up forty fifty percent from here, most people would be happy if your cost basis is here. <laughs> but if your cost basis is you know twenty five to thirty bucks, you're not going to be very happy if, if the company gets bought out for twenty three. Right, mm -hmm. um, but I, you know, I still like the name. I'm not adding to it though, so so I don't I don't feel good about it enough um, to add to it. Um, but you know, I don't really have any reason to sell it. So we'll see. I guess I guess I have to see a quarter. Um, I mean, really, what I'd like to see, I'd like to see them react well to a good quarter. That's probably been the biggest thing. They really haven't gotten much upside juice. Um, yeah, I would say three of the last four quarters they reported have been pretty good. So, so aside from just sort of healing off, healing up from a, a crazily ridiculous low price of like I don't know what was it ten or twelve, so you know I could argue a price they should have never even traded at. Um, and we'll we'll just have to see. Uh, you know, th this might be one where I almost feel better if you know, by, if it goes to twenty two and look, feels like it's it's got traction. You know, maybe maybe I'm better off at buying at 2022, and then and then maybe my opinion will change because I'll think it'll be a double from from 2022. Um, so I don't know. I, I'm a hold. You know, I know that's kind of a cop out because because usually you should either be selling something or buying something. But you know, I've I've done fine. I made plenty of money holding stocks and letting them work. So um, that's the best way I can say it. I, I kind of have to see the quarter, but I I it it has been disappointing. It's probably one of my one of the few names that I really haven't scored on in a big way uh, that I've really liked over the, in the last like two years. I mean, I love PayPal at thirty nine, you know, doubled. Love Mule, doubled. Love Nutanix, tripled. Love Twitter, tripled. So I mean, it, you know, of the names I really, if I would have penciled something in that I really, really liked eighteen months ago or so, it's probably the one that's it's probably the name that's done the worst. One of the names that you highlighted, you were actually hoping for a reaction to the downside so that you could buy it, and you somewhat prophesized what would happen, and that's NXPI. You got that down move, but I didn't see that you went out and got long. So has it not? Well, and, that, and now I now liking? I probably won't. Now I probably won't because I'd probably rather buy Twitter. Um, so, but I do like it. I mean, if you like semiconductor stocks, if you like. If you like company, by the way, they're they're in one. I mean, they're big in Internet of Things, right? Um, I might just I might just need some more time. I like the name. If I if I was if I was gonna buy another semiconductor stock, they would be the first the next name I would add to for sure. Um, but you know, I I, I I like the Qualcomm setup now too because I you know I was never if you remember this one of the very first times we talked. I think we talked about Qualcomm and what what I said was. And this this was like multiple times ago, but I said I said I don't Qualcomm doesn't need NXPI to go a lot higher, so so you know I might be kind of one of these guys that's probably more bullish on Qualcomm without NXPI. I, I think they would have been fine with NXPI. I think they would have been a very good, a really accretive earn, a really accretive merger for them. But I I never thought they needed them. So so I think the company is really is way more free now. They could really aggressively use cash for, for buybacks or whatever. Uh, they could do other M&A deals. Honestly, I, you know, I'd rather see Qualcomm do what I call small but aggressive M&A. Like, I'd, lo I'd love for them to buy AMBA. Um, you know, I, I'd love for them to buy maybe innovative chip design companies um, for lower market caps. So, so, in other words, you know, Qualcomm's doing, like, I don't know, somewhere in the neighborhood of 20 to $30 billion in cash flow a year. Think of how many small, cutting-edge, innovative chip companies they could buy. I mean, they could do $2 billion deals a quarter. And by the way, those would get approved easily. They wouldn't have to fight governments all over the world for a year and a half. So, um, I mean, the, it, it's kind of wide open. I mean, you know, Qualcomm could get in the fiber optics space. I mean, there, there's, there's so many things they could do now. At this point, all Qualcomm has to do is smartly utilize cash. And, and basically do a miniature version of sort of a Berkshire Hathaway or Google Playbook. I mean, they, they basically could M&A their way to doubling the, the company size in a short, very short period of time. I mean, they, they, if they just invest cash flow wisely, um, 
you know, we're, we're talking what is, let's get exact numbers here. Qualcomm is a $90 billion market cap company in four years with good M&A that could double the size of the company. And that's not even using all the cash flow. That's just using some of it. So a combination of, of, M of cash flow usage with M&A and buybacks, I, I, think, I think you get a, double, a, double, a, a stock that's double in size. By the way, it doesn't mean the stock price it will be double. It could be more because I think if Qualcomm can double in size, uh, it's, it's, it's almost like a mini NVIDIA situation, really. When, when NVIDIA went from having kind of nothing, not everything go right at the same time and having different things work against the business, so it was a super undervalued chip company for roughly four, five, six years, and then finally they hit a, they hit a cycle where everything went right for them. Uh, you, you could see something similar to Qualcomm, but I don't know. You know, I don't really feel I have to get into NXPI. What I might do with NXPI, though, is buy some cheapy calls because now you can, you can go out and look. So now there's no merger. So all the call premium is gone, and now you can start looking at calls that are a little ways out of the money, you know, let's say 10 bucks or $15 out of the money, and, and they're cheap. So, you know, I, I probably should do that. Maybe in the next week or so I might do that, but... Uh, yeah, suffice to say, if I if I decide to add another semiconductor stock, it, it'll be NXPI. I, I like it, um, and it's you know ninety five is a good price. Uh, I'd I'd like it better than eighty five to ninety, but ninety five is fine. All right, but but again, not not to beat the whole. I mean, uh, Twitter thirty four and change versus NXPI. I, I'm going to go Twitter. I mean, that's what I did today. All right. I do have another listener question who wants me to ask you about. Uh, bear with me one second. Sina. Uh, he's been yeah, long I mean, since that's... 44 and holding and would like your current take. Yeah, I mean, that's another one. Like, I, I actually think Sina's got, uh, you know, hey, if I, if I felt like NXPI had more upside than Sina, I would have sold Sina by NXPI. So... Uh, same thing. I, I think I'd rather be in Sina. I think there's a lot of, uh, I mean, there is some M&A rumblings on it. I mean, th there's a chance it could get bought out. I mean, I still don't think Dialog can buy them out. Um, but, I mean, they, what do they want to buy them for? Like 63 or 68 or 69 or something like that? I mean, honestly, I think if, if you're going to realistically buy Sina, I think you've got to have an 80 handle in front of it. Um, but here, here's another name that's counter cyclical. They're, they're heading into a time where they're going to probably be growing where the rest of the semiconductor industry or much of the semiconductor industry has flat to declining growth. So, you know, it's, it's the, in fact, the only, the only reason I think Sina hasn't performed better in the last few weeks is that the, the Sox, the Sox has been really struggling. So, you know, we, we've hit that point where the Sox has hit highs a couple times, it's faded. There's some people kind of talking about, a, you know, a double top or a head and shoulders pattern on it. Um, and Sox has a lot of stuff that's pretty pumped up. We've seen Avago get hit hard. We've seen a couple other semis get hit hard. Uh, honestly, I think, I think Sina is just kind of struggling with, with semiconductor uh, industry headwinds right now. Um, so, so I think once people kind of get more clarity on what the Sina growth is, uh, trajectory is, I think you could see the stock do exceedingly well um, versus the space. Um, so there again, I, I, I'm, I'm very favorable on it. Uh, and, and I don't mind it here. I, again, I, was, I, was, I added to this thing several times in the low 40s, so I'm not, I'm not as eager to add to it here. Um, I might have even bought some in the, in the mid to high 30s on this too. Uh, but anyway, the bottom line is I, 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 like, I like how it sets up. I like the name. Um, and then, you know, the other thing that could happen, you could finally get a washout, you could get the semiconductor, the socks drop and correct enough, and then go on the next upswing, and then I think Sina will probably trade better, especially if, if they good news. I, I think they could have a pretty good quarter uh, this quarter, by the way. I haven't, I haven't really said that earnings was a big deal for them as of yet, but I think we're getting much closer to the time frame um, that they could start producing uh, some, some better growth numbers uh, organically. And so, uh, in fact, I'd say pretty much either this quarter or next quarter, we should start seeing better numbers from them with, with some pretty good growth com coming in. All right. So we've talked about some of the names that you might uh, be interested on the long side. And outside of maybe Facebook and um, the IGV, are there any other names that have caught your attention as possible shorts? 
Well, uh, I, I'm, you know, I always look, uh, I always look at proof point because I, because there, there again, it just, it, it's a stock and they're down today. They're not down huge. What is it? Five, six percent on respectable numbers. I, I, I would say the magnitude of the beat for them was probably a little less than normal. Uh, but again, this one just kind of lines up. It, it, it's as odd as, as odd as, uh, uh, FireEye trades as a cheap stock. Proofpoint just sort of gets a pass as a hot stock. It just kind of, you know, some stocks just act that way. Um, another one might be Zillow. Uh, we, we haven't talked much about Zillow. That's another one down like 6 7% today. Um, but, you know, this this thing's gone up a ton. Um, you know, same thing. I mean, that that's also a beautiful pair trade, you know, long red fin, short Zillow. I, I think it would work really, really well. In fact, I think one of the very first times we talked when Twitter was still cheap, I said one of the easiest trades in the world is to be long Twitter and short Snap. Um, but so I, I think this is a really good pair trade. So I think ZZ, ZG sets up as a short. I mean, and some of these names we are, we've already talked about New Relic and some things. Mm -hmm. As far as new stuff, um, you know, I, I don't really know if I really have. The, the only new things would be names that are sort of in that top 10 of the IGV. That I'm just not directly short, um, but you know, I, I could add more shorts to kind of that thesis because uh, that is, you know, you know, here's one I'm going to say, and this this will be. I mean, I I used to love the stock. I had the stock. This is one of my big winners off the. So this is one of the stocks that got decimated in the spring of 2014. By the way, is ServiceNow N O W. So this was a high flyer. This was all part of the sort of the the mini cloud bubble of late of of that time frame that spring of 2014 time frame and i'm going to look right now okay service now went from 71 to 44 uh i probably didn't buy it at 44 I probably bought it 50 ish so i probably bought what i thought was a really good price and then i went another 10 percent below where i bought it um but i and i also was a buyer of service now in early 2016 as well but this is a stock, so we're talking about a stock, you know, at the last two major lows was roughly a $40, $50 stock, almost a $200 stock today. Um, and they have just been a, a earnings consistency juggernaut. They just, they just have been, they got a really good area in the market. Um, they've been a good grower. Uh, but it, this is pretty extended now. So, so this is one, I, and I, th this is a short I typically don't like to do because if I really like a company, if you notice, I said I may, I may sell Splunk. I'm probably not going to short it, even though I, I was basically right and it dropped 15, 20 points. But I would almost put this in that. I typically don't like another stock I would probably not like to short is Workday because I just like the company so much. I think it's going to be a much bigger company and ultimately a higher, a higher stock price. But these, the, all these names are just really extended. Again, this is part of this IGB cloud thesis, right? Um, but certain names, I, I would say cloud is now has, I, I would almost say it's got an 85% probability of a, of a decent decline at this point. And, and, and the quarter helps me because, yeah, did it spike on the quarter and did they have good results? Of course, they, they all, I, don't know if, I don't know if ServiceNow has ever missed, by the way. Um, but it's, it's having a hard time. So, you know, I mean, sometimes, sometimes that's the best time to short something, you know, isn't trying to top tick it, but is, 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 is letting, kind of letting the last bit of the enthusiasm get spent on it. And then you start seeing a little, the very, very start of fear start creeping into it. And the fear is from the people who bought it at the highest prices with the tightest stops. So that, those are your first victims. Then your next victims are, People who probably should have already trimmed it at lower prices because it was an overweighted fund position or something, but they kind of kept hanging on and hanging on and hanging on without selling any. Well, then, you know, again, you know how it works. All of a sudden, you get a 5%, 10% decline, 15% decline. You know, at some point, they start puking up shares. Um, so I don't know. And, and I, I mean, again, I like I don't know what, what, what price I'd want. I'd like I'd really want to buy now, even though I like the name. I mean, I'd, I'd say I'd, I'd easily buy it at 110, but 110 is a long way from here. <clears throat> you know, if, if it dropped to like 168, I wouldn't be a buyer at 168. Um, so, so sometimes that's a good short for me is if, if, if there's just a price, I, if I have a hard time finding a price, I'd be willing to buy a stock at. A lot of times I, I have had fairly decent success shorting it um, because even in a name I really like, it's just too extended. So, so that, that might be the one I would add. Um, 
but but I don't know if I really need to because I think IGV will basically give me the same thing. But but if I were to add a name, um, uh, that might be a good one. All right, let's do a little preview of what you're looking forward to next week as far as the big earnings. Of course, we've got Apple, but what are some of the other big ones that you're looking forward to? Well, you're going to have to tell me. I'm going to do my big earnings spreadsheet over the weekend. I haven't really dug into it a whole lot. I, I know Apple's coming. Uh, there, this is another huge week of earnings. Um, and again, I, I, I really think Apple, I mean, Apple's maybe one of the last things kind of holding us up. So, so I think if, if Apple doesn't, if Apple caves, that could sort of help my, uh, my warning call on potential NASDAQ, NASDAQ weakness. But I, I honestly haven't even, haven't even dived into all the companies that are going to report next week. Um, does briefing have a list yet? Yeah, we always do, and I'll tell you where to get it, and I'm sure it'll help the listeners. If you just go, we have a calendar tab, and then you'll have earnings results. If you just scroll down to where it says earnings results, then uh, you can, there's another, once you get to that page, you can get the week of uh, July 30th through the 3rd. And you'll get uh, a list of all the companies. Now it doesn't break it down by sector, but you'll you'll be able to find the stocks that you like. Yeah. Okay. So let's see here. Why is this not? Uh, I'm in that page. Found it right away. If I click July 30th to August 3rd, nothing happens. I'm on today. Yeah, I'm on today too, and for whatever reason, it, there's a there's a little lag on mine as well. So uh, we'll see if we if that uh, is an in-house thing or not. But uh, oh, there, I think I think it fi- did it finally click for me. Um, yeah, well, here's the other thing I always look at. I always let you guys do a list of of, of names. So so you publish a list, uh, and I I read it religiously of sort of where you. You reduce the number of names, um, but but hey, I've got this up now. We can go. Okay, Sun Sun Power Sun Power reports next week. Another another a couple names I'm going to kind of be on the lookout on, uh, like for warning type signs is like KLA Ten Core. I will say Lamb Lamb had had a good reaction, um, you know, to to a good report, which I was a little surprised. I, I I Lamb was another one I thought might have a hard time having a beat a quarter good enough for the stock to rise. Um, but I'm seeing, you know, Sun Powers out there. Uh, that could be interesting. Um, you know, we'll, we'll, we'll have to kind of see what uh, what what happens. I, I mean, honestly, right now my focus really is more not so much trying to find stuff that is good to buy in front of earnings. And here's why: I just think we're seeing it. It's it's harder to. Uh, I, I think it's it's the next. I think next week might even be harder than this week. By the way, for meaning. Companies that have good reports but don't beat numbers, I think, are going to have a harder time rising next week. I think this week is sort of setting the tone. Um, yeah, I think I think misses might be punished even more um, next week, to be honest. And uh, it, what what typically happens is you have to get to a point where you've had enough bad days in a row or enough enough downside in the market, and then it sets up a point where hey, you've got enough sellings occurred now. Now good reports have a better chance of being rewarded. I, I don't think we're going to see that turnaround next week. I think, I think you almost need another week of action like this week, and then and then you can start kind of thinking about, hey, are there tactically things you could you could increase in front of earnings? By the way, I don't I don't, I don't mind holding. I mean, somebody would say, well, hey, are are you upset that Twitter's down nineteen percent? I'm honestly not. I mean, I I've sold some. I'd prepared for it. I'd, I'd written some calls on it. Uh, the calls don't give you a ton of protection, by the way, if a stock drops this much. But, I mean, again, it's basically back to a price I, I'd buy it. And I didn't really want to buy any. I bought a little bit higher for some trading purposes and things. I mean, that, there's a good example, too. I probably shouldn't have. I mean, the shares that bought, what, at 41.42 are losing shares now. So, you know, so, sometimes you, tra- you think you got a decent little short-term gain set up. And and all it does is kind of is kind of magnify, uh, you know, the, the the action the next the next big move. Um, but the bottom line is, uh, you know, I'm pretty satisfied <laughs> with 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 my Twitter gains to this point, and, and that's an understatement. Um, and, you know, and I, and I think it's a good thing to add. You know, another name that that I'm going to bring up is Overstock. Now, th- this one is both kind of a chart play. Um, 
you know, a, a crypto play, but it really is more of what was overstock at 15. It was an incredibly undervalued retailer, internet retailer, which happened to have a ton of assets in blockchain investments, right? And so, so, so me and, and me and Gavin were all over this name when it was dirt cheap. Like, I, I think we both liked it at 15 bucks. Um, but I've got to say, I like how this is acting. And, you know, Bitcoin's kind of creeping back up. You know, we haven't heard much about blockchain. And I, I, I don't think the blockchain story is over at all. Um, so this is one, and they might be reporting relatively soon. Uh, and I, I would say the setup for this is interesting because... I don't know if I don't know if they'd have if they have a high a high bar. Yeah, August second is when they report, and I'm not sure that the bar for them to jump over is very high at this point. So that that that's an interesting line. I haven't talked about that much. By the way, the last time I talked about it, I was very close to buying it. I want to think between like thirty and thirty two, and I just missed it. I should have bought it. Um, I, th I think I even posted it as like people that like overstock should should look at the stock right now. So I hope I hope other people did better than me because they you know they might have taken my advice and I didn't do the trade, um, but I do like this. I think this sets up pretty well. Uh, I don't know if there's if you know th there could be downside here. This is a volatile stock, but I think I think if you were to value there, um, you know I've seen some some other work on this too besides my own. But if if you're just a value sort of a conservative valuation on just their blockchain assets and what those could be worth. You know they're probably selling it quite a bit more than what the what the market cap of the company is, and, and I mean that was the whole the whole thesis when it was when I first liked it really really cheap about half or less current price, is it was just so cheap. I mean the market cap for them was so much below. I mean you they literally had three separate businesses that each of those businesses could have been worth roughly two to three x what the then market cap was when it was I think it was trading like three hundred fifty to four hundred million market cap. And so, okay, the, the the traditional overstock business one could say is worth two to three x. The, the you know the Medici blockchain slash assets could be two to three x, and some other stuff. You know, I guess I guess maybe some Bitcoin type tertiary type assets could be worth quite a bit more. So you know, the stock kind of fulfilled to that, and then has dropped. I mean, this thing's had a massive, massive drop. Um, but you know, it's basically doubled where where it was when it was super cheap. So. You know, there's still roughly, um, you know, a multiple or so left left in this thing if this fulfills. So I'm kind of circling the wagons on this name again. All right. I'm going to get you out on this last question, and I'm going to put you on the spot. So get ready. I am going to ask you for a out-of-the-money lottery ticket play for next week. I well, I, I actually think that's relatively easy. So out of the money, I mean, you could you could try something on Amazon way cheaper than where the stock's trading right now. So I don't know. You you could you could try. I don't know. Throw a number: 100, 150, 200 below where where it's currently trading. I mean, that that's a that'd be a really really cheap lotto. And and, and if I mean, would it be that unusual if, for Amazon to drop? I don't know, a hundred points or more. I I wouldn't be surprised. I mean, that, that's the, the easiest one to come to my mind. I, I, th that would be a better question had I already done my earnings calendar for next week. Yeah, I know. Cause, cause that's I, why I, I wanted to put you on the spot. Oh, yeah, but no, I mean, I, I'm, I'm trying to think, you know. You know, another one, I mean, this might seem odd, but I, I you know, I'm short some Microsoft right now. And I, I just kind of feel like, now, you know, this thing doesn't move as much, so therefore options are a lot cheaper. I don't know. You might want to look at options on this. Same thing. I don't know, 95s or something something like that. And that's I mean, Microsoft? Stock, it, yeah. I mean, it wasn't that long ago that Microsoft was was at, at all-time highs or whatever. I think it's all-time highs. It, uh, I think it's above the, the 2,000 highs. But, you know, w would it be that uh, that weird for Microsoft to, to go down to 95? Now, the, the problem is that's a, he's asking a week. That might be a tougher move I for know. a week. <laughs> but, but still, I mean, if, if the market were to really crack, um, I mean, I just don't – I don't – yeah, in fact, I'm just looking. You know, two two three weeks ago, stock was at, at corrected down to that 97 level. So, I mean, the the bottom of the cloud is 95 on Microsoft. And it's been a long time since the stock. Well, you know, it's actually below the cloud in in April. Now they look at it. No, I don't know. I, Amazon's probably the easiest one though, because because if if we really cave in, if the market were to drop, 
would it would it be that you know would it be that tough? Uh, I'm saying this the wrong way. It would be tough for the market to drop much if they if they don't take Amazon down. So so if if, if we have a market decline, they they almost have to pull a couple hundred points out of out of uh, out of Amazon at least at least a hundred. Um, I guess two hundred would be ten percent. So so maybe more like five percent. Uh, and then you know, here's one that just came to mind. I mean, hey, it's, sometimes the lottos work better be just when you have something reporting. You know, Apple's reporting. You know, what does everybody expect? Uh, everybody's still. I would say most people are on this pretty crowded on the same side of the ship on Apple. So you could take a shot at some Apple downside. I, I'm not. I, I don't. You know, I have been short Apple a few times this year, and I've been more right than wrong. I've caught a couple really good shorts in it. I I don't know. I'm not really feeling I should short Apple in in front of the print, but it, that, that that's another one. I, I don't know if it would really take much to 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 put in a you know a big move on Apple is usually like I want to say like five and a half to seven percent. So I don't know. You you could kind of look at something like that. What what would a five to ten percent you know drop do? So you could kind of calibrate the put the put strike you would need to get paid. On a drop like that, but you know, you get pencil in a 15, 15 point drop on Apple. Um, I, the the question is, what you know, is it going to pay? Um, but it, it's it's pretty juiced. I mean, and I I just don't I I would be surprised if they if they report that well or guide that well. We'll see. All right. Well, ask. But see, that. people don't care. People don't seem to care about. Uh, eventually they'll care again by the way i mean apple keeps missing enough quarters people will eventually care by the way that's that's exactly what happened in 2012 uh they they ignored it they ignored it they ignored it it was it was either the third or fourth quarter where where they reported a pretty unimpressive number that you finally had that big cave in on apple and on a stock that nobody thought would would go down 15 to 20 percent it ended up i think what would apple do from top to bottom decline, I think was like 45, might have been 50%. I know it was 40, 45%. Um, I mean, anything's possible. You know, you should never assume that things can't happen because thing, thing, uh, odd things always happen in the markets. And, and, you know, and odd things typically happen to the things where people think are the most safe. So I would almost say, you know, you can almost take a shot at anything where people perceive it, the, that these are the most safe things in the market right now. People thought Facebook was exceedingly safe. It dropped a lot. You know, uh, people erroneously think th thought Netflix was super safe. It, it dropped a lot. Um, I, I, is, is, does, does anybody think there's a safer stock than Apple out there? So I'll, I'll leave it at that. I think I think Apple downside is probably aside with Am along with Amazon is probably the two best lotto plays. All right. Well, I only asked you for one. You gave us a few. So, hey, I'm sure listeners uh, appreciate that. Well, I don't know if you've been watching the market while we, while we've been talking. Hey, it's what getting, can I say? I, getting... I said 400 to 700 points. Boom. We already got 100 of it right yeah, here yeah. on the air, baby. Well, there you have it. They're selling the, <laughs> the, the they're selling the market like the world's coming to an end. Hopefully that doesn't happen and we can talk next week. Sound good? <laughs> Yeah, I, I'm not too worried about about a world-ending event, but but no, I mean. Well, you what said was, what odd was things happen, right? We were, what, what was the Nasdaq when we were when we started? Uh, minus twenty-five. It already had a like head that? start. It already had a head start. Don't cheat. <laughs> just no, I, I'm yeah. I'm just trying to peg it. I'm trying to remember. I, I'm pretty sure that the the Dow was green, though. I think the S and P was close to green. Yeah, it um, wasn't. Uh, I, I don't I don't remember exactly what it was down, but it wasn't down. Uh, the triple Qs are now down. Over one percent, one point three, and IWM is now down one point eight. So, uh, quite a, quite a bashing so far, and that's odd on a Friday. Did you see IBM? Did you see IBM? IWM. Oh, IWM. By the way, uh, okay, here's here's the trip ball, third one. I, I like IBM. Same thing. I probably won't do it. It it feels very much when I said I liked Intel a lot in the low thirties. I want to say what wasn't maybe thirty exactly. Might have been 31, 32. I'd have to go find the note, and it was quite a few months ago now. But I, I said I probably am not going to do this. But for people that like slow, boring, safe tech, I think Intel in the low 30s is a really good buy. And Intel's been a pretty good, pretty good mover since then. Um, I think IBM sets up as a long. And, and, you know, the only thing IBM probably needs is for other stuff to not act well. And money could rotate into uh, quite nicely into IBM. Again, I probably aren't going to do it because I don't. These, these big boring stocks are not 
are not my cup of tea, but I can identify them and I can help people make money than them. And I, I wouldn't, this, this one name, I certainly went short. No way would I short IBM. I think, I think this thing, in fact, I could say IBM going to kind of 160, 165 is a good start and then, and then building ahead of steam from there. Um, and so I will say this, I might, I've been looking at some IBM calls. That's, you know, I don't do a ton of options. I typically do options in lieu of stock ownership. So, you know, I tend to do them with long expiries and things like that. Um, I've kind of been toying around with the idea of, of uh, like, semi-leaps on, on this name. All right. So well, there's a three for There's a three for Didn't mean to keep you on the air, but there's a no, three No, hey, no, I, I, I scheduled it. I knew it was going to be a long conversation. There was a lot going on and a lot to talk about. You gave us some really, really good ideas, so I think we'll stop there and uh, – We'll get the the replay out there later this afternoon, and everyone can re-listen to it and see if they're positioned correctly uh, heading into next week. All right, my man. Well, thank you so much. Education Have a great as weekend. always. You too. And then, by the way, only uh, only 600 Nasdaq points to go on the <laughs> downside. <laughs> there you go. We, we already got 100 of our 700. All right. Well, we'll uh, we'll definitely be watching it. That's for sure. Okay. Later. Uh, thanks a lot, Sean.